stand before you and just remind you it is just an honor to be in the land of the living. Thank God for the music in the house and for the spirit of worship. It's in the house. It's imperative that every day we sing unto the Lord. Every time we enter into the house of the Lord, we are to sing. Last week, as I was talking to the Lord, I said, Father, I'll be faithful to open my mouth and sing. And this is one song that came to my heart. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. So I thank you. Amen. I said, Jesus. Because most of you do know that I happen to minister freely after I sing and after the praises of the Lord. And this is my desire. If I needed to take that extra time, God spoke to my heart and he said, it's not about you. He says, it's about my people opening their mouth to sing because some of them don't sing until Sunday morning and some never sing. And God says, it's important for them to open up and sing every time there is an assembly it's important for them to do that amen it's not just for you and not just to create an atmosphere of worship but he says i need to hear them sing to me amen that's what he does so let's give god a praise to hear going to continue in the study of the book of Ephesians and we ask that you would open your Bibles to Ephesians. We have uh, handouts for you. This is the first two pages and this is the other page so if we can get someone to assist Sister Donna quickly. I'm going to ask if you can. This is page one and two and three and four. I Greet you in the precious name of Jesus. I am so grateful to be able to come to the house of the Lord tonight. Last week we opened up the book of Ephesians. And some of you may not have been here, but we're going to continue on. How many know that it is a battle? We're on a battlefield every day. There is no discharge from the warfare. And sometimes believers think that, wow, I can't wait until I get through this. Well, once you get through one, you go through another. Mm -hmm. And it will be a battlefield until we leave this earth. Yes. So I was hearing the Spirit of the Lord say several things to me. He said, and this is not the lesson, but just as you're getting that and opening up to Ephesians, he says, sometimes believers think it's strange when they are tried. But the word says, think of not strange concerning the fiery trials that are to try you. Sometimes believers feel they are not to be challenged for their faith. But we are. Check on that. We are living epistles read and known of all men. Sometimes believers are unprotected in the areas of their minds. And that's why Paul wrote in Ephesians, the importance of having on the full armor of God. We're not going to go into that like I thought we were going to go into the armor of God, but we are going to go into some things that the Lord said, it is important for you not to skip. Sometimes believers are caught off guard, but we are supposed to be ye also ready at all times. Amen? Sometimes believers assume they are covered, protected just because they're born again. Not so. Amen? The time we are living in is a very critical time. It is a very critical time that we're living in. Not because of the elections, but all over the world. The world is troubled and the people of God are sitting on a keg of dynamite. And some believers are just doing that, just sitting, and they're not watching, they're not praying, they're not active, doing all that God wants us to do. When I think of what the Lord wants, reflecting, He has already told us what the end is going to be. He has already told us that we're more than conquerors. He has already finished us. 
uh, finished everything for us, but he's letting us know it is important for believers to be believers. Amen. It is important for believers to be saints. Amen? Amen. All right. So those of you who already have your handouts, we're going to go into the word of the Lord and we trust that the Lord will minister to you because what he has done for us is marvelous and it should make us worship the Lord even more. It should make our praise of God, our thanksgiving of God because he looked while we were yet dead in sin. Christ died for us, looked over all of every, everything that we've done, and even may yet do. Are you with me? Yes. So tonight, Ephesians is one of four epistles that was written by Paul while he was in prison. And Paul wrote Ephesians, we shared this with you, it's a review for some of you, but Paul wrote Ephesians for at least two reasons. What is the first reason he wrote it? To do what? Re yes, reveal the purpose of God for who? The whole universe. Are y'all with me? God has shown his purpose through his son, Jesus Christ, and he is what? Working out the purpose of the church, which is his body on earth. Which is his, but y'all have the handout. Does everybody have a handout? Did I run out? Brother Tony, I think, is making a few, but everybody has. Very good. So, we're going to read this together. God has shown his purpose through his Son, Jesus Christ, and he's working out his purpose through the church, which is his body on earth. We are his body where? On earth. Whose body? No, we belong to ourselves. Now, I'm talking to us as believers because I believe. They're all believers in the house, so I'm going to challenge you. We are to be whose body? Whose body? Whose body? Christ's body. We are to be his body on the earth. And we are on what kind of field? A battlefield. Every day of our life, there is a battle. It's a major battle. The enemy is after our faith. Yes. Come on, we got to wake up. He is after our faith. Yes. One of the gifts that God gave us in Ephesians, we talked about it last week, is faith and grace. He has given us grace. He has given us faith. And he is calling us to be faithful. I gave a definition last week of being faithful. And sometimes we think faithful is always being, uh, being able to be depended upon. Well, yes, that is true. We should be dependable. We should be. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. But he's called us to another level of faithfulness. Let's go. The second reason that Paul wrote Ephesians is to do what? <laughs> and every day we're tried. Every day believers are tried on their walk of faith. Their walk of, in the spirit of oneness. The enemy will try to divide believers. Yeah. He tries to bring divisiveness within one believer. Yeah. So well, how can that be possible? You may want to do one thing, your mind tells you to do another. I mean, just a whole bunch of confusion. Why? Because we have not armed ourselves with the word of the Lord. When I would do good, evil is always present. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So, he says, the second... <coughs> At least the second, because there are many things out there in Ephesians to encourage the church to walk in a spirit of oneness and to be kind one to another. The enemy tries to bring division and tell you don't need to, you, you, you need to have respect to persons. That person did this for you, so you do that for this person. But don't do it for another. But to be Kind one to another. and tender, hard. not hard hearted, but what? For this is a great division, too. I'll forgive them as far as they've forgiven me, but forgiving who? One one even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven us. And He has forgiven us. He forgives us and has forgiven us. He has forgiven us in advance. Yeah. He holds nothing 
He holds nothing against us. Are y'all with me? Amen. Now judgment may come, but individuals bring judgment on themselves when they don't obey the word of the Lord. Are y'all with me? Yes. Let's go on. Last week we entered Ephesians and spoke about the greeting, the call of God, His call to Paul, and His call to the saints. To the saints and also the blessings of God. I had planned on skipping right into uh, the sixth chapter. And as I began to type, Holy Spirit began to bring more out. And I said, oh, looks like we're going another way. And we're not. He said, no, you don't need to skip over this because my people need to know where they need to be. Amen. Amen? Amen. So let's talk about it. Ephesians 1 and 3 says what? Oh, oh, no. Ephesians 1 and 3 says, if you opened up your book, the Bible to Ephesians, Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our who have Now, we've given you some notes. The blessing of God are what kind of blessings? Based on Ephesians 1 and 3. They're heavenly blessings. They are not but somebody said, well, what about the material blessings? We're not talking about that. We're talking about what Ephesians is saying, what Paul is saying. Amen? He's talking about the spiritual blessings. If I can just take this one second and say, um, when Paul was in prison, Paul was in Yayan and crying about being locked up. He wrote four epistles while he was in prison. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, come on, and Philemon. He wrote those four things. And the Holy Spirit says, when we become in prison, we will cry about being... But Paul was focused on his assignment. And he was writing to the different churches about how they needed to conduct themselves. You won't see the whole of Ephesians talking about, I was locked up for this. I was locked up for that. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Come on, help me out. <laughs> right? Yes. So, well, but you know, but Paul was a different individual. Paul was in the flesh just like us. Just wanted to go there. Is this helping anyone? He stayed focused. Amen. And this is what the enemy wants to do, is to bring distractions so we're not focused on the goal. Are y'all with me? But this is what happened. Stay focused. Are y'all with me? The blessings of God are heavenly blessings, not material. Before Christ, God did what? Now, Israel did what? And they carried themselves, they received these material blessings, and they they carried themselves above, they wouldn't share with the other nations. And so God says, after Christ, this is what happened. God deals with blessing him with spiritual blessings. Number one. These are, the, these are the spiritual, this is what spiritual blessings are. First, we're going to talk about that. Spiritual blessings are of the? Spirit. They're of the Spirit. It is what? The Spirit that controls man. Now, the first word there, you see it's capital, right? It is the? That means that's indicative of the Holy Spirit. Now, you will see small letters before the next few spirits, word spirit, that's man spirit. There is a difference. Amen? Amen? It is the spirit that controls man and the circumstances that surround him. Now, let's read this. A man may feel bad. Uh -huh. But if his spirit is strong, he rises in that means that he needs to be on guard. So when those things happen to bring depression, oppression, or to make him feel down, he needs to rise above this. Let's read. He says what? He 
Why? Because he did what? Because he he rose up and he conquered those feelings. Are y'all with me? Let's go on. Mm -hmm. But if his if his spirit is what? Weak. If his spirit is what? Weak. Okay, here's the difference. Whether at work or at mm -hmm. he often falls around in self-pity, groaning, right, right, and living a defeated day. Is this true? Yes. Has anybody ever found this to be true? Yes. If your spirit is weak and you get hit with a spirit of oppression or depression and you do not have enough strength to rise above that, you'll wallow around in that, complain about that, you won't rise up and conquer that. Come on with me. It's important for us to go here. It's important for us to recognize, okay, I can identify with that. I've been there before. I've done that before. But it's not the will of the Lord. This is whose spirit? Whose spirit? We're talking about whose spirit now. Now let's go on in further. It says, and too often, the days stretch into weeks, months, until the prison life is down more than it's up. All because the spirit is too weak to conquer. Yes. It indicates that, we, that man has to do something. Should man rely on his spirit? No. Whose spirit? God's spirit. That's why it's important for us to do several things. Enter into the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and to pray in the Holy Ghost and to pray the word of God and to cast down imaginations and every vain thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Every day we have to keep ourselves under subjection because flesh wants to rise up and do what it wishes to do but every day we have to purpose in our heart in our mind father have your way with me today i and be true to yourself i know me and i know how ugly i can be so forgive me create in me a clean heart every day every day throughout the hours of the day because the enemy comes and he comes to steal, kill, and destroy the believer's hope. Yes, he does. Let's go on. It says, the major... Right? Yes. This is a major statement. The major blessings of God are bound to be blessings that are what? that enable a person to yes he wants us to know that these blessings are for us to control our life and all this because he loved us and this wonderful number two spiritual blessings are the very opposite of they are the blessings of the the inner man the psalmist says, create in me a clean heart. He also talked about his heart. Father, you know, uh, the heart of man is deceitfully, who can know it? Are y'all with me? Let me go on really quickly. But of all, no, no, we haven't finished. They are the blessings of the inner man, the blessings of the, but of all blessings, they are the most glorious. Yes. Even though we may think that it's the, the, it's the material blessings that I need. God, I'm seeking your hand, not your face. It is the spiritual blessings that are more satisfying. But our flesh doesn't know that. If I can just get this, then God, I'm going to serve you greater. If I can just do this, I can... They are the blessings that do what? Erase the loneliness. Yes. Uh huh. They erase loneliness, alienation, and the purposelessness of man. We are tried in all those areas. The enemy will speak. You're lonely. You're all by yourself. 
He'll speak these things to your flesh. Are you with me? They are the blessings that give man what? Number three. Spiritual blessings are vastly Spiritual. They are permanent and perfect and eternal and, and last forever. They are the very same spiritual blessings exist and can be Yes. Number four, spiritual blessings are found where? Only in Christ. Only in Christ. Oh, I can get these spiritual blessings all by myself. No. This is not to the unregenerated man. This is not to that carnal mind individual. Even to the religious that say that I've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. He said, what are you talking about? I thought this was talking about... No, because there are some people that have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, yet they will not allow God to rule them. Amen. Lord means He's sovereign and He rules. Amen. I surrender to your will every day. Yes. You have your way in my life. Yes. Are y'all with me? Amen. So that's rude. Why do you know that? No. There are some religious people, and I really want to go here, but let me just take my time to get there because I'll get there eventually. Jesus Christ has been raised from the yeah. and exalted to the right. He is in heaven, surrounded by all the heavenly atmosphere and blessings. All heavenly blessings belong to who? Yeah, they're Him. They're His. He is Lord. He's sovereign. He is Lord. And therefore, here we go. Let's read this together. If a person is to experience the spiritual blessings, he must be in Christ. If a person is in Christ, then he sits in heaven with Christ. How is this possible? When a person believes in Christ, truly believes, God takes his faith in Christ and counts it as righteousness. God counts the person to be the same as Christ, righteous and acceptable. In God's mind, faith in Christ makes a person just like Christ, holy and righteous and acceptable for heaven. Therefore, when a person believes in Christ, God's mind sees the person in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And being seated in heaven, the person can experience all the blessings of heaven. To be in Christ, to be seated in God's Son, so much that God becomes elated. Elated so much that he counts the person to be just like Christ, acceptable and worthy to be blessed with all blessings. Yes, spiritual blessings of heaven. But the person must be where? In Christ. The, must, the person must believe in Christ. It also points, you don't see the word obedience, but we must be obedient to Christ. So Paul goes on in verse 4. Here he says, these verses, he talks about these spiritual blessings. Let's go to verse 4. It says, according as he hath chosen. chosen us in him. I'm at verse 4, chapter 1. Before the That we should be Stop right there. Before the foundations, He chose us to be holy, to be blameless. We have several passages of Scripture. And I asked someone to get 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Someone Ephesians 4, 24. Someone Hebrews 12, 14. Someone 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16. And someone 2 Peter 3 and 11. Do we need to read all those scriptures? This is Bible study. This is Bible teaching. It's important for us to read what he says to the believer. Are you with me? 
This first blessing, God has chosen us to be holy and he's chosen us to be blameless. Just think about it. Before the world was created, this is what he chose for us. He says, I want you to be blameless. I want you to be holy. Who has the first passage of scripture? As you're trying to, to get there, the word holy means to be set apart. It means to be consecrated to God. And it's the same word that is used for saint in verse 1. Okay. I don't know. Thank you, Gabriel. Having therefore these promises. Having therefore these promises. Dearly beloved. Dearly beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Thank you. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So well this is this is not written to the believer. It's written to the believer. We have to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, flesh. flesh and spirit. So well, can we be filthy in the flesh? Well the Bible says we can be. If it tells us to cleanse ourselves from that, then it, and, and that's why it's important for us to ask, like, daily examine ourselves. Father, examine me. Tell me what I need to change. Is my attitude right? Am I thinking right? Am I, you know, am I walking the way you want me to walk? Am I speaking the way you want me to speak? Am I acting the way you want me to act? Am I treating someone? The, am I, and, and, and let them answer you. Sometimes we can talk so much until we can't hear God. God wants to speak back to us and tell us. But there are some that will continue talking and talk and talk and talk that whole time up, close the book or get off our knees or wherever, whatever position we're in, and we just go on with something else rather, and, and rather than a listen for God to say, oh, you need to do this. Do you believe you can drown his voice out? Yeah. Let's go on. Ephesians 4.24, I don't know who has it. And that she put on the new man. Put on the old man. New new man. man. Well, then that means that we can put on the old man. We can put on the old man. There are things that will rise up. We're on the battlefield every day. And there are things that will rise up within your household, among your family members. That will get you to put on the old man. <laughs> well, wait. I'll put on the new man when I get ready to go to church. But I'm going to give this person a piece of my mind. I'm going to straighten the situation out. And it can be about anyone. It can be with anyone. Mm -hmm. In the family. On the job. We can assess the situation and say, they're not saved anyway, so let me just get them straight. They don't, they don't know how I'm supposed to act, so I'm just going to straighten these people out. But all souls belong to God, right? Yes. Is this helping anyone? Yes. Oh, yeah, I've been tried several times this week. Mm -hmm. And thank God that I can say that he had a whole... My, my purpose every day was to dig into Ephesians, to dig into Ephesians, to dig into Ephesians. And thank God, even though I was sitting relaxing, I had a family member call me and wanted to raise all kind of ruckus. I want to know so and so and so. And it came in real easy, just as slippery and slimy as a snake. And I said, wait a minute, hold up. Holy Ghost got these radars got coming up. I said, oh, well, I can tell you who, who's involved with you. So and so and so and so. Oh, no. So and so and so. I said, but it wasn't, I wasn't putting on the old man, but the new man was in charge. And I said, I see all of this is trying to check me, trying to find out. But I gave praise to the Lord after several, several attempts for them to get me all riled up. I said, I think I made a supreme sacrifice to do everything I was supposed to do. And I did it as it was. And when I said, the Bible says, be fervent in business, I don't want to hear what the Bible says. I said, okay, that's identifying who you are. Yeah. And I just didn't rile them up. I said, I love you anyhow. You're my sibling. But this is what, this is how I govern my life. Yeah. This is what I live by. Why am I saying that to you? Because people, whether they're friends or family, whatever, they will rise up and challenge you for the word of God. 
Because as the Bible says, we are red. We are red and known of all men. Every day, people want to see, are you acting like Jesus? When I see you, do I see you acting like Jesus? Are you forgiving? Are you kind? Are you this and are you that? And I just continued to say, I said, you know, I love you. I said, I don't like what you're doing. This is not supposed to be. You're not supposed to do this. And I said, I forbid you to do so and so and so. But for the whole time, the Holy Spirit had control. Because I said to one sibling, I said, you know what? I'm so grateful that the Lord had a hold of me. Because if I was in my flesh, I would have called everyone he said he represented and blasted them and laid them out. Oh, y'all know how I, you know how our flesh can get. Oh, I will give you not only amazing grace, but I will give you every, as Pastor Malloy says, sweeping opportunity to prove me wrong. Oh, I don't care who you are. The flesh has a yes. tendency to rise yes. up yes. and I don't care yes. and so and so and they can't see you but your neck is jerking yes. and your blood pressure is rising mm -hmm. and all and you get yourself into a frenzy yes. but I'm so grateful that God had control because he had purpose in he had purpose in his plan I said father I don't want to mess up and miss miss a step I want to press into Ephesians I really do. I would come home saying, oh, I hope there's some more hours before dinner has to be prepared. I hope I can press in. Why? Because Holy Spirit puts a press in your spirit yes. to get into his word. Yes. That's true. So he says, and put on the new man, which is found, which is after God. It's created in and true holiness. Every day we are tried, believers. We are on a battlefield. Yes. And the next passage of scripture, Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with who? All men. Yes, with all men. And I said to the last brother I talked to on the phone, I said, listen. I said, you and I believe the word of God. Thank God they caught us trying to walk the word out. That the Bible says, do good unto all men, especially unto the household of faith. I said, we have no time to get entangled with craziness right now because there's too much work in the kingdom to be done. And if he can side, if he can get you, uh, you know how trains get off the track? If he can get you off the track, he will do it. Come on, the enemy knows. Family members, and I love my family. I do. They said, when you got nothing, you... If you have nothing else, you have family. And we know family. And family knows us. They know the day you were born. They know what you were doing. They remember the bad and the good. They remember more the bad than the good. They remember more of your fleshly deeds than they remember that you're born again. And they will try you to see if you're born again. Not just in family reunions, on your birthday, on holidays. I'm going to just call them. And now that we're living in the social media range, and it's a range, I'll blast you on Facebook. Let me see if I can just dig up and throw back. And I, I do, I love my family. I really do. But you have to recognize, not just family, but your friends. You have to make sure that you guard yourself. I'm getting a little sidetracked here, but let's go back into this. And it says, but as he which hath called you is what? Holy. So be ye holy in some manner of conversation. In all manner of conversation. and all manner of behavior. That's what it means. Our behavior, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. That's 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16. Now, another passage of scripture in 2 Peter 3 and 11, it says, seeing then, if you can turn to that, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in? In all holy conversation. And all of our behavior and godliness. Sometimes God wants us to just keep it buttoned. Yes. Just keep quiet and let them talk and rip. Mm -hmm. let, let it rip. Yeah. But don't let it rip you up. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
That, and that's what he talks about being holy. The next passage of scripture is where? Philippians 2 and 15. Anyone have that? Let's read that. That they be, and this talks about being blameless. That, that you may be what? Blameless and harmless. The sons of the enemy. The sons of who? Without, in the midst of a... Now who wants to beg the difference? Are we living in a crooked and perverse nation? Where we have, you know, I don't, you know, I'm just here for a second. I'm just here for a second. Just here for a second. Where some of the politicians will be trying to rip out the word of God. Just so, so and so and so and so. I said, okay. You're really trying to act out. Like you're trying to make an appeal to the evangelicals. Mm -hmm. You got to see through and with the eyes of the spirit, you see what's getting ready to go down. Are you all with me? Because yeah. the world is trying to paint the picture like if we can just get the right person in the right house, in the White House, and maybe I'm right, the right person in the right house. Okay, the right person in the house of God, which is the right house. Yes. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You donate to my campaign, I'll make you this. Yeah. And there has been that ever since the first president. Yeah. Come on. There's no salvation in any other but who? The Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we can't forsake the word of God. This is the only place that we find salvation is in the word. Yes. Are you all with me? Amen. Let's go on. It says... That this crooked and perverse nation, it says, among whom ye shine as, I hope you have this passage of scripture, we shine as what? Lights, lights in the world. That's what we're supposed to shine as, lights. Yes. Our light should never go out. Someone is always watching to see if the light that you're shining is Jesus' light. Because his light never goes out. Right. Our light will go out. Uh -huh. I'm tired. So I don't, I don't feel like I can handle anything. So don't bother me, Sister Leslie. I'm tired. You know, like they had this phrase, I'm hangry. You hungry and you're angry. I'm tangry. I'm tired and I'm angry. Believers are not supposed to do that. Right? So that's what I'm, why I'm saying this. Because... This is a time we're tried on every hand. He wants to see, how faithful are you? We talked about that last week. And then Colossians 1, 21 and 22 says, And you that were sometimes what? Aliens and enemies where? Come on. Colossians 1, 21, 22. Real key. It says DOL because I was typing fast and didn't go back and prove because there is no DOL, there's no abbreviation for that. Pastor Rudolph knows that. I just kept caught that, so just bear with me. I had no time to do a spell check because the whole time I was studying and pressing in, phone was ringing, another brother. I talked to that. Go back to the study. Another brother. Then the other brother. Lost the tape. From the morning, from the time I woke up, I said, no, I gotta, I gotta talk to God first. No, I gotta get on my knees first because I don't wanna rip. I don't wanna say, you know what, well, I'm the only one. I'm the only one who did so and so and so. I went there, but I went there carefully. Y'all with me? Yes. What's Colossians say? And you that were. Enemies where? In your what? What's it saying? Our minds. By what kind of works? He says, yet now hath he reconciled where? To do what? In his sight. He's done this. Jesus has done something in his body because of his love for us. That's some deep love. Yeah. Believe me, it's some deep love. Think about it. Think about maybe your best friend. The best friend will fall out with you. 
Come on, talk to me. Best friends will fall out. I'm not talking about the worst friends, but the best friends will fall out. You didn't do it right. And because you don't conform, you still didn't do it right. Just point to something. And first Thessalonians 3.13, it says, To the end, he may, he may establish your hearts. How? Unblameable in holiness before even our, at the coming of our, with all. And First Thessalonians 5.23 says, And the very God of, the very God of confusion, the very God of peace. peace is only found in the Lord. The very God of peace, he does what? He sanctifies us wholly. And Paul says, I pray God your... No, no, not Holy Spirit. I pray your whole spirit. Last week, the Holy Spirit, I, I shared with someone. I said, Father, I'm driving. I said, Father, what happened? So and so and so and so. As I was practicing your presence, and he said, I'm going to tell you what happened. He said, the soul, your soul, the soul of man is the seat of your, what? Emotion, your will, your intellect. He said, now, when the blow came, the blow came of your dad's passing, your responsibility, you rose up and you began to apply yourself to do all of these things. And different things began to take so much of your attention. And you were not able to, because you thought, although I was praying, saved the whole time, but those things were pulling so at you. He said, now, share that. Because some individuals, he said, I should always be in the center, controlling your emotion, your will, your intellect. I was not pushing him aside, but he was answering my question and said, Father, I didn't feel, I felt your presence, but that thing that you and I had, he said, this is what happens. And explain to the saints that the enemy will come and try to attack your soul, your emotion, your will, and your intellect. What are you talking about? The way you process information. Because if he can get you in your emotion, get you upset, and you're sanctified, your whole spirit, everything is not being governed by the Holy Spirit, you're going to rise up. Your emotions will not be holy. Talk to me. Your will will not be holy. Your intellect will not be holy. Hey, listen, I need to go and pause here a minute. You may, may think about it. The, about the preachers of Atlanta. Some people are more faithful to, the, to these reality shows than they are to the Word of God. They will not miss a beat. Let me program it so I can go back and see. Some of that crazy stuff that's happening on the preachers of Atlanta, the preachers of L.A., and the preachers of Detroit, it's not the will of God. Mm -hmm. And some believers think, oh, they're doing that, so I guess that's it. I guess I need to dress up with my hot pants on oh, and God. my big old platform and go down there and witness to these prostitutes and all that. The devil is a liar. <laughs> the standard of God will not drop to that. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Some of y'all may not have seen it, but it's gotten that vile. So that's what the church needs to gravitate to. Oh, the church needs to grab. The whole pastor had just came out of the closet and said, I'm homosexual. And the over two point so and so billion church empty out completely. Oh, but one conversation was. But he was just homosexual pastor. I said, the devil is a liar. He said, I had them in my congregation. He said, oh, Pastor Rudolph, they're putting this on TV show. That must be acceptable. And for people who don't read the Bible, they may be believing this. Yes. I just thought I'd give y'all a station identification. Because it's real. It's not true. But every generation needs to hear the truth, yes. the word of God. Our children need to know because there are generations, if they're not hearing the unadulterated gospel, the word of God preach, then they're going to gravitate towards what they see because that seems to be popular. Are y'all with me? Yes. 
Do y'all believe those lies that you see mm -hmm. on three? I, I watch it. I don't watch it. Yeah, you know why I watch it? So I can pre prepare myself to deal with it. It's crazy. Does it make sense to you? I don't hear nobody say no. Does it make sense to you what y'all mean and heard just now? You might not have seen it, but it's, it's, it's out there. It's really out there. And it says that I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be what? Unto the... Now, 2 Peter 3 and 14 says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, what does he say? Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without... And we can't do this on our own. So I'm not preaching or teaching a gospel saying like, oh, I gotta conform to this. Let me help you out. The believer's perfection is in Christ Jesus and in Christ alone. As we believe in the Lord, there is a perfecting that only He can do. Are y'all with me? No man, someone say no man. No man. Not even a believer can live a perfect and sinless life. No man is righteous or ever will be. Jesus Christ, someone say that. Jesus he is the only person who has ever lived a sinless and perfect life. Therefore, he is the only person who has the right to live with God. But this is what God does. Our hope, our only hope of ever living with God is to believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Is to do what? Believe. That's where our salvation comes. That's where our perfection comes from. That's where our holiness comes from. Believing the word of God. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Are y'all with me? Yeah. I'm going to end there. But there's something that's really, really pushing on me to say this one thing. And I just really want to read this to you because it, it, it's so true. And then I'm going to take my seat. And hopefully you'll remember those handouts next week so that we can continue on. Let me find that, Lord. Someone can get John 5, 24. And I trust by the time you get John 5 and 24, I will have this information to read. Is this lesson helping anyone think? of their walk with the Lord. And it's a beautiful walk. If you're walking with the Lord. It's a wonderful walk if we're walking with the Lord. Now, Father, help me find that. If it's your will, I'll share this. The Bible speaks of this particular word that I'm digging for. I think I'll, I'll uh, see. That's why. Stop trying to find it. Just go, you can find that in Jesus' name. Who has John 5 24?
should have made pink highlights. Didn't want to really jump down. Does anyone have uh, John 5 and 24? Yeah. I decree I find that real quick. So many times. Okay, who has John 5:24? Oh, thank you. Surely, surely. Jesus is speaking here. Yes. He yes. says, "Surely, surely." Mm -hmm. I say unto you, mm -hmm. the hour is coming, mm -hmm. and now is when the dead shall hear. Oh no, I'm reading wrong. Yes. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word. And believe it on him that sent me as everlasting life. Okay. Hopefully everybody has that passage of scripture, John 5 and 24. Okay? I'll just turn to it. I should have turned to it initially. Let's all read it. And then I'm going to take my seat. Amen. Jesus says, Verily, verily, let's read that. I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall Okay, that I found in 25. I'm reading, thank you, Sister Maureen. Verily, verily, I say unto he that, he that heareth whose word? Christ's word, and believeth on him, hath, and shall not, but is. Now, death. Now, I'll just leave you with this. What does Jesus mean about death? Death before conversion. Man lives a life of death. Before conversion, man lives a life of death. Yes. How can a man be living and yet be dead? And the answer to that question is we must understand what death means. Because every time we see the word death, we think of somebody in the ground. But let me help you. The basic meaning of death, and from the Greek word nekros, N-E-K-R-O-S, is separation. Someone say separation. separation. Jesus is speaking here about separation. He's speaking either separation, death means it. Let me slow it down. Death never means extinction, annihilation, non-existence, or inactivity. The basic meaning of death is what? Separation. Death simply means that a person is separated, either separated from his body, or from God, or from both. Death is the separation of a person from the purpose or use for which he was intended. Y'all got that? No. Man was created, and this is what blesses me, and then I'm taking my seat. Man was created to know, to fellowship, to worship, and serve God. But man does not do it. If he worships at all, this is powerful. If man worships at all, he worships his own ideas and concepts of God, creating a God to suit his own notions, a God that will allow him to go ahead and live as he wishes. That powerful? I'll read it again. Somebody might need this. If man worships at all, he worships his own ideas and concepts of God, creating a God to suit his own notions, a God that will allow him to go ahead and live as he wishes. The point is this. Man does not fulfill his purpose on earth. Not the purpose for which he was created. He has little 
if anything to do with God. That's why we must believe the Lord Jesus Christ. We must die to ourselves because if we are left alone, we will make our own gods and we'll do what we want to do when we want to do it, how we want to do it. And that's what a lot of us are seeing even on the reality TVs. This is my understanding. This is my concept of God. Are y'all with me? The last thing is this. Man is separated from and dead to God. But the Bible speaks, the Bible speaks of three deaths. Physical death, spiritual death, and eternal death. And we don't want to be spiritually dead. And that's what I spoke of a minute ago. The spiritual death is a man from God, a man from God. While he is still living and walking, he's separated from God. And it can be a believer. Is this helping anybody? It's powerful. But we want to be in union with the Lord. My time is up. It's well spent. A person may walk in life without God and Christ, rejecting, rebelling, and cursing God. The man is spiritually separated from God. He is dead to God. A person may walk in life as a religious person, worshiping a God of his own thoughts and notions, rejecting the only living and true God who was revealed by Jesus Christ. The religious person is spiritually separated from God. He is dead to God. There's so much more. We'll go back there. We'll go back there because that's in Ephesians, the second chapter, but it's key that we understand, God, I don't want to be spiritually dead. And I don't want to be eternally dead. Are you all with me? Yeah. But God has given us everything that we need to live a victorious life if we put on the new man, which is challenged every day, every minute of the day, because we're on the battlefield. And he's going to try. Let me see if I can get you. Let me see if I can get you. Yeah. Oh, let me slip in, in the still of the night, when you're exhausted. And that's why it's important to ask that. Cover my mind with the blood of Jesus. Help my mind, help me to meditate on good things while I'm sleeping. Help me to wake up to, to what you want me to wake up to. Otherwise, I'm going to violate. Are you with me? Yes. Let's lift our hands and, and worship the Lord. I am going to get out of the way and just bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father God, for your word. And I just pray, Father God, that we have been enlightened and that you have been glorified. Be magnified, O oh Lord. Be magnified in our life. And again, Father, we ask that you would forgive us for sins of omission. Forgive us for sins of commission. Help us to recognize that we are a light. And let your light, help us to let your light shine through us. Help us to walk in the ways that you would help us to walk in. Father, we just honor you. We surrender to your will. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the believers of God said, Amen. Amen.